No, 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 that's wrong. Dixie Diamonds, 31. Dixie, 8.45 a.m. With a thousand thoughts swirling through his head, Edward jumped from feeling shame about his question to Baloney to extreme excitement concerning their large cache of diamonds, and then to worry for his new friend Baloney's freedom and safety with the approach of Brent C. Brency. You know, Ed said tentatively, what if your Rosier is safe and sound in France, but is, well, shielding himself somehow from telepathic communication? I mean, if he had to flee and if he was successful in doing so, then wouldn't it stand a reason that he wanted to lay low so that Brency couldn't find him? Baloney emitted more of a feeling than a thought, a feeling highly reminiscent of a human exhaling hard while furrowing his brow before responding with, those are three rather large what-ifs, but given your postulates, I see the logic of your conclusion. What? Gerald asked, confused by Baloney's big words. Sorry, it said to Gerald. Let me rephrase. Yes, that makes sense, but we don't have any proof of it. Right, exactly, Ed said. That's what got me wondering if there might be some way to contact your Rosier, a way that's almost as fast as your telepathy. Well, what about email? Think that might work. Well, yes, if we had an email address for him, Baloney replied. Right, Ed said, nodding. Exactly the problem. We have a modem, so email is possible. But without an email address, we've no idea how to even begin. What about the library? Lizzie asked. Baloney said Rosier was headed back to his university in France. We could do a computer search of faculty at Rosier's university. It would at least be a start. It would, Eddie enthused. Oh, he added, pulling in the reins. That is, if you know the name of his university. I mean, otherwise it still holds, but I have no idea how many universities there are in, uh, where did you say he was going? Oh, right, Metz. I mean, I have no idea. Dr. Rosier was returning to École Nationale des Engineers. At least, that was the plan before Brency attacked him. Even if Rosie is alive, he may have been too frightened to have returned to his former school, but Looney replied. But that's a good start, a great start, Lizzie exclaimed. We can check at the library. We've nothing to lose. Well, almost nothing, Eddie said. As we both know, it's a three and a half hour drive to Cooktown. That'll make eight hours total to get there, do our research and get home. I wish we'd known on Monday we'd be heading to Cooktown. We could have postponed our monthly jaunt to the big city another week. Not that I mind, his tone indicating that perhaps he thought this an unwise use of time, considering the ever-lessening distance between themselves and Brency. Oh, darling, Lizzie said, looking at Eddie with adoration in her eyes. Your brilliant idea is certainly worth eight hours. Besides, that means we should be back around four o'clock, right? What time did you say Brency is due here, Baloney? His ETA is 8.20 this evening, according to his, hmm, abusive conversation with Jane Ross. Also, perhaps if I leave the area and fly away, he'll follow me to this cook town and leave you all alone. We appreciate your concern, Baloney, Gerald said, but you're not flying away alone. We're here to help you. We love you, and that's what friends do. Hear, hear, Cheeky exclaimed. Oh, I've just had a thought. We've plenty of other friends. What's to keep us from gathering an army of animals and organizing them as a homeland defense unit. That could help, right? Blimey, Eddie said. Blimey, this Brency doesn't stand a chance with you four geniuses standing against him. Four? Lizzie asked. What about you? Me? Ha! Ah, apparently I'm a rather a dim bulb compared with this crowd's luminescence, Ed replied. I'm just a driver. And if I'm not mistaken, you and I are headed to Cooktown via land cruiser while Balloony here takes to the air. Right, mate? Right, Lizzie, Gerald, Cheeky, and Balloony chorused at the same time. Oh, 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 Ed added, tomorrow's New Year's. Let's phone ahead and make sure the library is open, shall we?